Hey, Gutfox here. So, I've been asked for a lot of top five lists, and I'm gonna knock them all out today. One video to master all the other videos. Top five quarterbacks, each position in Mutt. Uh, we're gonna group some positions together, obviously. You'll see as we go along how we group them. To get right into it, here we are with the quarterbacks, all right? Mobile quarterbacks are powerful. It's the time of the year where they're all accurate. Obviously, we just had a, a nerfing of a mobile quarterback um, of the, the Mike Vick cheese. So they're down. They're a little bit worse than they were pre-patch, but now here they are uh, post-patch. My top five in order. Josh Allen. Uh, I think you'd be like, what? Josh Allen? What the H? Russell Wilson, Steve Young, Don McNabb, Michael Vick. All right. Now, why Mr. Josh Allen? Well, when you look at him, 93 overall, it's like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Like, and, and I've, like, I just want to say, I've, I've used most every single card in the game. So these are my personal favorites. Obviously, your personal favorites might differ, or differ, but these are what I like to use. 86 speed with 97 throw power, gorgeous. Yeah, his uh, his deep will get boosted up when you put go deep on him to get 99 throw power. Uh, throw accuracy deep at 87, but like mid to high 80s on the accuracy. Good speed, good throw power. When you go against other guys, like Russell Wilson's 86, okay. Uh, other mobile quarterbacks, McNabb's 87 only, uh, Otto Graham's 81, Steve Young, another mobile, 86, so besides like Mike Vick, it's it's right there at, at the top end speed, uh, so I think that's probably the most controversial, otherwise, I don't think the other ones are that controversial, you see people running with all of them, um, all of them played very well for me, in that order I, the, is the way I like them, but Josh Allen, do not sleep on that card um he he was cheap he's still pretty cheap i think he's the cheapest of all these so if you're looking for a good budget quarterback that would be the guy to go to at uh 239 versus all the other ones like um 579 uh mcnabs 368 which isn't terrible and then you got russell wilson um limited time hurts a lot of these cards prices and whatnot uh but those are my top five quarterbacks all right let's move on to running backs i'm not gonna really do too much here um, with that, all right, top five running backs. Number one, Todd Gurley. Let me switch to it on Mudhead here. I think I, I think his stats speak for himself. I mean, I got I was able to get a boost up to 98 speed. Just going on, on Mudhead alone, um, 95 speed stock. Fastest stock running back. Um, I guess I could, I could show speed since it's such important as the attribute. Um, so 95 speed. Oh, the second, tie for second with, uh, after Chris Johnson, tie with Barry. Uh, but then, but then he's not only got elusiveness, but he has he has good trucking and amazing break tackle. Whereas, like, uh, so he can he can both run over people and th and uh, around them, along with that that high end speed, acceleration, agility. And then Chris Johnson, he can't run through people. Can he? He can run around him really well. Um, and he can only run around, He can run around him just slightly better than Barry Sanders. Um, so pretty similar cards right there. I, I the slight edge is Chris Johnson with that one extra speed. Uh, the acceleration and agility. So Barry's got one extra agility. Chris Johnson got one extra speed. You see where my loyalty lies, and that's the speed, even though agility is really nice. So um, if you could boost them both up to 99, which you can, might be worth to get Barry to get that extra agility. So just FYI. Um, but but overall on my list, some of it, some of it, I, I, most of it's based off like what you can boost guys to, and then what they come through stock. So it's kind of a mix on the list. Uh, but that's kind of my top five. Ricky Williams is obviously free to everybody. He's my number four running back in the game. Really, this isn't a position that you need somebody besides for Ricky. I would get somebody like Tariq Cohen uh, to back up Ricky for, for the budget ballers. But otherwise, Adrian Peterson runs really well, runs really well too, uh, with the high trucking, uh, break tackle, and, and 93 speed, which is not bad either. I think 93 speed is tied for the uh, third fastest running back if I if I switch it on over the, the the surprising one I'm leaving out is Marcus Allen he is right there right there on the precipice of, of five he might even be six ish right there with McCaffrey of course too so a lot of them um uh, looking pretty similar Eddie George 91 speed is really nice high trucking um but I couldn't put him in a top five unfortunately but I, I do like the way a lot of these running backs run um pretty nice to have a good selection of running backs in this year's game so congrats on all the legends good stuff uh wide receiver is up next we are going to go to the top five here. Now, obviously, wide receiving is more than just running on the field and catching the ball, but Randy Moss does it better than any other card in the game, in my opinion. Um, even though he's got no run block, you don't want to run behind him, but boy, do you want to throw it to him. Uh, Randy Moss, 99 speed, six foot four is what you got there. So, yeah, I, I don't really have many words for that other than, like, if, you, if you've used him, you know. You know his power. Um, high points, crossing patterns, streaks, drags. He's not the greatest, of course, if you're going to drag, spin guy. Um, that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make to get the rest of it. Amari Cooper's more balanced. He can spin. He can do all that, and he can block. 
Uh, but I do like throwing it up a little bit more to Randy Moss and Amari. Um, I don't know the highest speed you can get Amari to with a theme team. It might be 99. Uh, but for, for non-theme teams, um, I go Randy, then Amari. But Amari is a, a baller because he, he's all facets. In the, in the all facets uh, space of the game, that's why Steve Smith got to number three right there. Because he can also block and run and spin and do it all. Um, then Tyree Kill because of the 99 speed of the stock. Just, what is he, stock 98? Um, so pretty easy to get there. And then Jerry Rice, Captain Jerry Rice, right behind Tyreek. Because if Rice's run block was better, I'd feel better about keeping him higher. I I'd probably move him ahead of Tyreek. Uh, but he, he still does have pretty poor run block, unfortunately. So that's why he's there. All right, next on the list, i got to start moving it right here, is uh, tight end. So why are my tight ends like the way they are? Switch it over. So that that is Captain Shannon Sharp I have as my number one. Um, and, and why is Captain Shannon Sharp? We'll just show his legend card. He's top end speed, um, at least when he boosts there with with uh, uh, so he's top end speed, top end run block, uh, decent route running, not the greatest with that captain, uh, but overall you need speed and run block. And he's basically once you get the captain card out there, I mean this these stats aren't representative. You gotta add something to get the captain card. Uh, it's basically another like tackle out there at, at tight end. So to have like uh, the ability to have your tight end be an, like an offensive tackle along with somebody that can run in the low 90s speed as streaks and clearouts. Uh, it, it's pretty darn glitchy. Now, he doesn't have a spin threshold, which is unfortunate. Um, probably one of his weakest points, along with his, his lack of height. So, he does he does, he does does miss two very important, very powerful things in the game. But the one I, when I view Shannon Sharp, I've not regret it. He is currently my number two tight end because I'm, I am using Mr. Mr. Kittle as my clear out. 93 speed. Amazing. You know, he's got a lower run block. He doesn't have great agility. Can't spin. Um, so, every, every, every tight end in this game basically has a hole. Um, you can say Vernon Davis, 6'3", eh, isn't perfect for spec catching. Um, also doesn't have great run block, but 90 speed is beautiful. Spec catch, uh, also very good on the card. Uh, and, and then, uh, who else do I have? I have Hunter Henry and Greg Olson. So Hunter Henry is better, better high point target, a little bit slower. Uh, run block, of course, just like another one like that offensive tackle out there with a run blocker. You can boost it up with zone run. Um, so great run blocker, decent speed, tall. Uh, could catch the ball on uh, spectacular catches and high points. So Hunter Henry is a great tight end too. And then my number five was Mr. Mr. Olsen here, who's another one who could kind of do it all, but not the greatest racker. Uh, run block is also a little bit lower than you like to see, but a great spec catch high point pass. I mean, not to say, Shockey's right there too, just a little bit slower, um, kind of like a mix between all of them. So those are my favorite. Going back to the list here quick. Sharp, Kittle, Davis, Henry, Olsen, all of them, uh, they all have their special needs. Like, so don't like, I shouldn't, don't, uh, don't use like Kittle as like your run blocker, your run heavy scheme. Like just because Kittle's number two ahead of Hunter Henry doesn't mean he's better for a run blocking scheme if you're running all the time um, than not. All right. So next up, uh, we're going to switch over. I'm not going to do offense linemen because whatever. Uh, just look at run block or pass block for those. Defensive line. Offensive linemen don't really stand out to me. All right, we're, we're going to highlight them all. Here are my top five defensive linemen. I'm going to go Miles Garrett, number one. Now, it, it's a tentative spot. I, I like Miles Garrett, but I feel like this is the weakest number one I have. Um, the issue with D linemen is like they, they do so many different things while they block shed and they and they rush the passer. So, it depends what you want. Miles Garrett has kind of the best of both worlds for stats, if you're going to if you're gonna talk like that. Uh, going to give me that lip. Uh, all right, go here. Do, do, do. So Miles Garrett, because uh, he's got 95 block shed, so he's a top tier block shedder. Um, strong, fast, tall, uh, can be usered. Uh, I, I mean, 86 speed is not Lawrence Taylor speed, but it's still very good for defensive linemen. You can spy him. Power move 95, so he can rush the passer pretty well there too. So that's why Miles Garrett's there, kind of, kind of just like a set him and forget him. Use him in any scheme. You can use him at defensive tackle. You can use that defensive end. He, he'll do it all for you. Um, so basically, it's, he's a very I like guys that are like uh, the ability to just do anything because I got a very varied scheme on defense. Sometimes I'll be blitzing that way. Sometimes I'll be dropping everybody off. Sometimes I'll be using somebody random. I'll cross man random dudes. So my defense is very varied and, and, and it's somebody that can basically just be a, a jack of all trades and a, and a master of them all um, is a very nice card to have. So lower finesse move, which is why I don't love the choice for number one. So I make a good uh, argument for being number one, but the finesse move not being there really does hurt his uh, candidacy. Number two, I did have Bruce Smith. Why is Bruce Smith my second favorite defensive lineman? Uh, basically because I can get him to 99 uh, finesse and 99 power move uh, when I have him powered up with all the uh, boosts from John Madden and whatnot. So being able to get both the finesse and power move to such a high level, obviously being 99 being the top one, 
Uh, basically makes him a pass rushing monster. Hard to stop. Speed isn't what you'd want, so that's why he's not number one. 79 speed is very good, though. Powered up to 80. All these things can get plus one speed. I don't know if I needed to qualify that. So uh, being able to do all that thing, rushing the passer, is basically just a consistent guy you put there, um, either on your defensive tackle, defensive end, and just let him go at it. You don't even need a funky blitz. He'll get some decent block sheds, get you a sack every, I'd say a sack every two games from Bruce Smith, which is not bad for Mutt. Um, it really depends on who you're playing. Like, you can get multiple sacks a game if they're holding onto the ball too long with Bruce Smith, uh, depending, of course, on their scheme. So he is he's dominant there, basically the most dominant uh, pass rusher. Talk about dominant pass rushers. I really like Bosa. He was my number three. Um, again, another one that I could get to 99-99 if I needed it uh, with with his power up and then uh, the pass rushing chems, I believe. Wait, 95 power move, pass rushing chems, and John Madden. Right. So... Um, 82 speed, a little bit faster than Bruce Smith. You got plus three there. Um, so uh, another decent spy pass. Like, block shed, I feel like, I've said this multiple times, I'll say it again. Block shed still matters. But the extent that it matters, matters less than it mattered last year. So, like, the delta between how important block shed has went down, whereas I still think power move, finesse move, uh, still makes a difference in the pass rushing game. So that's why I like pass rushers more than, uh, block shedders, even though I put a great block shedder. And good pass rusher is my number one. Um, not my number four, if you guys want to go back to the list, Khalil Mack and the number five was Sheard. So we'll take a look at those ones. Again, another one's Mack. Mack is wonderful because he's fast. Uh, he can he can do decent block shedding and uh, decent against the pass too. Um, so that, that speed basically makes him a great edge rusher for you. And then we all know the power of the Sheard. 95 block shed, 95 finesse move. And a, a, a glorious, glorious defensive end. Um, 82 speed, which is very good. Um, strength 82 for what you if you believe in that or not I believe it matters a little bit this year it doesn't matter like I it's all it's it's at the threshold where it's something that you you don't want to look at it a ton but you do want to take it into effect a little bit but it, it does matter like like last year I said it matters even less in the run game because th- th- it doesn't feel like that the sheds are as consistent this year as they were last year uh, all right back back to this uh, so D line there linebackers Top five right there. What do we got? All right, let me let me bring them up on the... So this is both pass rushers and drop linebackers combined. Uh, so my top five, Lawrence Taylor, Bobby Wagner, Justin Houston, Leighton Van Der Esch, and Von Miller. We got a mix of drop and um, nice little pass rushers there. So my number one is Lawrence Taylor, and he's been number one with a gun for a long time. So when you power up Lawrence Taylor, he's a 95. So he's got... When you power up to 90 speed, he can get... Uh, Power move easily up to 99. Block shed. If you go that block shed route, he's got there. Finesse move. Uh, he could also get the finesse up there to the mid 90s. So just an all around goon. One of the best users in the game. Um, uh, wait, what's his agility? One of the best user linebackers in the game. Agility 88. It's not the greatest. Not not the worst, but not the greatest. Um, so again, another scheme flexible guy that you can do everything with except for leave the CPU on him in coverage, which I get it is an important thing for a, a linebacker to do. Um, but user or pass rush, ideally send him on the pass rush and uh, user like a safety or something um, or, or a couple of the other guys that I'm talking about. So that's Lawrence Taylor. That's why he's my number one. I think you guys have run against Lawrence Taylor and just the headaches he causes. Um, he does play like Lawrence Taylor. He, he played more like Lawrence Taylor played when the Thanksgiving promo came out or his first legend card came out uh, where a lot of cards actually ended up catching up to him. Like right now, we just got Bobby Wagner for team of the year. Absolute amazing card that, that beats... Um, Lawrence Taylor and speed, great zone coverage. Uh, so a great user, great CPU linebacker, hit power 96, beautiful all across the board, basically set him, forget him. And that's why he's 900 K. Yeah. But he is wonderful out there. Um, just, just no words. Can I say to equate his greatness? All right. Number three might be a little bit of a, I I don't know. Do you think, I don't know if you guys will be, um, kind of eh about this choice. Justin Houston, now, why is Justin Houston against other other pass rushers like Von Miller or whatnot? Well, he's a little bit more flexible at 77 zone. Now, that's not great, but it's not like wait till the ball gets to the receiver's hands before a break on it, bad zone. I think that threshold's 75, if I call, recall correctly. Um, so, 77 there. Um, okay in coverage. Obviously, decent speed. 85 is less than you want right now in your linebacker core because a lot of people are just subbing out 
um, linebackers, four safeties. But if you like at a three four scheme, this guy being your your outside backer three four scheme is basically the ideal. He can cover a little, pass rush wonderfully, and has got decent speed in case you ever need to use him at six foot three. So good flexibility there for Mr. Houston. Um, number four was Leighton Vander Esch, team of the year card. Uh, rookie premier players are, are just absolutely over their or should be over their heads for him. I just want to see the zone coverage on him. 87 zone, that's easily boosted up to 90 with uh, lockdown, or uh, depending on easy, depending on who you are and what your team is. Amazing acceleration, speed, um, agility. I, I kind of like it over 90. I don't think there's a threshold, but something weird about round number. It does it just does things to me. Um, so great, great block shit, great all around card of the drop. But of course, do not pass rush him. He is a 4-3 uh, linebacker or a nickel linebacker, um, or and a very good user at six foot four too. And number five was Von Miller. Uh, I don't think we need to go too deep into Von Miller. You guys understand uh, what he's about. Was that, that was it. Yeah, that was it, right? Yeah. Von Miller, 95, duh. 88 speed, top end speed, good pass rushing, decent block shed. All right, what else do you need to know? Um, that's about it. He's a pass rushing guy, not a drop guy, and those are my top five linebackers. Like, you can make an argument with him against. I think he's just too balanced. Um, 92, 92, 92. You really want to stand out stat there, and then his zone is also really terrible. So he's he's not really wonderful. Well, no, no, not, not terrible, but not a top end pass rusher and a decent drop coverage. He's like he's like a worse Justin Houston, right? On uh, on pass rushing. So that's why I put pass rush. That's why I put Justin ahead of him. I mean, I I can see it being close though. Um, all right. Next up, CB. Do, 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 do. All right, my top five. Deion Sanders, number one. He's always making glitchy plays. If you've used him, you know the weird things he does to opponents. Just He just gets the balls quickly. Uh, Kyle Fuller, I feel the same way. Got nose to the ball. Rod Woodson's great, too. Kyle Fuller and Rod Woodson are essentially, I mean, Woodson are essentially like mirror images of each other. Um, you can both get them both up to like 98 speed. Uh, more on theme teams, of course. Uh, but better agility on Rod, better hit power on Kyle. So I went with a slightly, I went like the plus, I think it's like 10 or so hit power on Kyle over Woodson, but I have my tackling on conservative, so the hit power doesn't really show itself that often. Um, but I, I did like the way, like Kyle's made, they both made so many plays for me. I don't know. I think Kyle's easier to get than Rod, but shoot, I don't think you can make a mistake with either one of those. Uh, then I go Lattimore and Peterson. I like, I like, uh, I like Peterson's agility and I like Lattimore's, you know, all around wonderfulness too. I mean, there isn't really much else to say about that at corner. A lot of corners now are, are starting to feel a lot alike. A lot of similar speeds. You know, the Daryl, uh, Daryl Green. Uh, like I talk about Lattimore Peterson. Ramsey came out a little bit less than I than I loved it on his playoff card because it was agility is kind of low, so I didn't love the way it plays. Aeneas Williams, another solid one, a little slower than you like to see though. Um, that's why Peterson and Gilmore or Lattimore. Sorry, Lattimore is a 94 speed. Peterson at 93. Peterson has 96 agility though. That's why he's there. Jair is also at, uh, what, 94 speed, 95 agility. So those are my top five CBs. Moving on up to safeties. We're not splitting them. We're doing free and strong together. Um, so those are my top five. Ed Reed, Jamal Adams, Brian Dawkins, Earl Thomas, Derwin James. All right, move it over. So I went Ed Reed as my number one, basically because I like to cross man. And uh, I, I think he's good for that scheme specifically. If you're going to a zone, zone only, I would say you'd probably look at somebody like Dawkins, Jamal, or Derwin, right? Or, I mean, you can make an argument for a lot, too. Lots a little slow, slower than you like. But, like, you'd go Jamal and Dawkins because they're hit power over Ed. But I do like Ed Reed's 91 man coverage to cross man him. I feel more safe. Uh, it's just the scheme that I run on a 3-3-5. He allows me to do that a little bit better. So I cross man who I think is going to run a crossing route um, every play with Ed. So he's provided more value to me specifically. But depending on your scheme, I can see why you would choose Jamal and Brian over that. So I can get Ed Reed and Jamal. Ed Reed and my team. Ed Reed has 99 speed. Jamal Adams has 98 speed. Brian Dawkins has 98. Earl Thomas and Derwin James. I guess I can look at their stats too. Look at Derwin James a little bit. 91 speed. You can boost that up. Uh, what's nice about him is he can get like uh, I think you get sprinter and stuff on him, um, and then uh, who was I talking about? Oh, Kevin Bayard is really good too. Ninety three speed, 
88 hit power. 83 man coverage hurts him, though, to be that free safety. That's why I don't think he's he's near the top three. Um, he's out of, out, just outside my top 10. Amos is another solid player, too. Um, another fast guy that you can cross, man. Uh, do decent there. And I said Earl Thomas, but why am I having a problem finding Earl Thomas right now? I am blind, aren't I? There you are. Ghost Earl Thomas, 92 speed, 92 hit power, 95 zone. Um, so decent man coverage, a little bit lesser than you like to see, but uh, he played well for me out there. So those, uh, I wouldn't be against putting Earl Thomas, uh, putting in, uh, say, Adrian Amos for Earl Thomas, or maybe a Bayard there either. Uh, but that's kind of like my rankings, how I have them at the moment. Because um, I do like that extra hit power on Earl. And he seems to make more plays. Kevin just, you know, he's there. But he's not exactly um, the playmaker I feel like other cards are. But maybe it's just small sample size or something. Anyways, that is it for my rankings for the top positions in Madden. I didn't realize it was going to go 20 minutes. I apologize. CB, we'll, we'll do one more quick run through. Um, so safeties, CBs, linebackers, and... D-line, tight ends, wide receivers. Let me know what you guys agree or disagree on. Um, hopefully you guys like this. Top five cards at each position content right before we get the Super Bowl stuff. Um, and yeah, I expect, I'd expect a Super Bowl card at probably each of these positions. Hopefully to take one out. Uh, otherwise, it'll be a disappointing promo if we don't get top five cards. That's it. Thanks for watching. Call to action. I'll see you tomorrow.